and welcome back to Vintage Disney. Here on Brian Sings Are Cool. Walt Disney is known as a master storyteller. He brought us adaptations of fairy tales from other lands, but he also gave us adaptations of our own tall tales and legends. And why not? Walt Disney loved America. He allowed us to celebrate the heroic lives of men like Francis Marion, the Swamp Fox, Delfago Baca, and Texas John Slaughter. Along with these men who once lived and breathed, Walt also celebrated our rich heritage of folklore that are still important pieces of our country's history. The American folk stories, the tall tales, and the legends brought to us by one of the greatest storytellers of all time. Let's look at an adaptation of the steel driving man himself, John Henry. John Henry first grabbed the attention of Americans in the Allegheny Mountains in 1872. The tale glorified the Hercules-like exploits of a free slave who worked as a steel driver. The story made its way to music, and the folk song John Henry has been covered by everyone from Johnny Cash to Woody Guthrie. He's said to have worked the CNO line near Talcott, West Virginia, where he raced against a steam-powered rock drilling machine, laying the track for the Big Bend Tunnel. The legend goes John beat the steam drill, but died of exhaustion a short time later with a hammer forged from the chains he wore as a slave. There's much speculation about whether John Henry was real or not. Records suggest that such a contest may have taken place, and John Henry perhaps could have been a 19-year-old inmate named John William Henry, who was hired out as a laborer by the Virginia Penitentiary. The legend's true origins being a mystery only make it more endearing. Disney released the short John Henry in 2000, and it was directed by Mark Henn, the animator behind characters such as Ariel, Belle, and Princess Jasmine. The animation is reminiscent of Disney's 60s and 70s style, utilizing of iWorks xerography machine, where animation cells are copied directly from the artist's drawings instead of being traced, so you see the sketch lines in the finished product. In a folk story like John Henry, the sketchy style really works well. I also love the use of black paper and pastels in certain sequences. Mark Penn received a nomination for an Annie Award for Best Short Animated Film Direction, and it's not hard to see why. This steel-driving man deserves all the praise he gets. Moving on, we have the tale of John Chapman, a real-life pioneer we all know as Johnny Appleseed. Chapman lived from 1774 to 1845 and introduced apple trees to Pennsylvania, Ohio, Indiana, West Virginia, and even Ontario. Along the way, he preached the gospel, even converting a number of Native Americans who said he was touched by the Great Spirit. Disney's adaptation comes to us from 1948's Melody Time and sees Johnny inspired by an angel to go west and plant apple seeds so settlers will have something to eat on their travels. Along the way, Johnny sings, The Lord is Good to Me. Melody Time, as mentioned in another episode, is from Disney's post-war package film series meant to recoup income lost during the war. The short was directed by Wilford Jackson and features the work of three of Walt's nine old men, Milt Call, Ollie Johnston, and Eric Larson. In reality, John Chapman's religious restrictions forbid him from using any techniques used to improve his apples. Thus, he had to grow them from seeds, making them small and bitter, not too good for all of the items the characters sing about in this short. They were good for cider, though, and given the quality of water at the time, John Chapman saved hundreds of lives by providing a means to a safer drink. The short offers some enjoyable character designs against some beautiful backgrounds and catchy songs. A great starting point to learning about a man as fascinating as John Chapman. We go from planting apple trees to a man and his blue ox. This is Paul Bunyan. Paul Bunyan started out in the oral tradition of North American loggers at the turn of the 20th century. But many of the tale's elements come together when the character was used as an advertising mascot in 1916 for the Red River Lumber Company. These new elements included Babe the Blue Ox and Bunyan's giant size. Many of the Bunyan stories were created by the writer of these advertisements, William B. Lawford, including Bunyan being responsible for the creation of numerous American landmarks. Unfortunately, his use as an advertising mascot buries so much of the original stories of the oral tradition, but embellishment is what folklore is all about. The Disney adaptation comes to us from 1958. Thurl Ravenscroft stars as the voice of Paul. 
Thurl's booming bass voice was used many times by Walt, including as one of the singing busts in the Haunted Mansion, but he is probably most remembered as the voice of Tony the Tiger. The short was directed by Les Clark and was nominated for an Oscar as Best Animated Short, but lost to the Looney Tunes short, Nighty Night Bugs. With an enjoyable framing device of having other lumberjacks sharing their Paul Bunyan stories, the stylized modern backgrounds, and music by George Bruns, Paul Bunyan will have you swinging back for more. Next up we have the true life tale that became legend, Casey Jones, the brave engineer. Songs and stories about trains have always intrigued me. I guess it's in my blood, as my grandfather worked for the railroad. The big engines traveling across America. It's a beautiful image that has given us a number of heroes, but perhaps none as memorable as Casey Jones. His real name was John Luther Jones, a loyal engineer with a strong sense of duty. Jones, known by his fellow railroaders as a risk taker, lost his life on April 30th, 1900, when his train collided with a stalled freight train in Vaughan, Mississippi. Because Jones stayed on board to slow the train, the lives of his passengers were spared. Casey Jones was the only one to die that day, but quickly became a folk hero. Johnny Cash, Mississippi John Hurt, Hank Snow, and countless others have immortalized Casey in song. And in 1950, Disney produced The Brave Engineer. The short takes a number of liberties. Most notably, the real crash occurred when Casey struck the rear of a train installed on the track due to a broken airline. Not a head-on collision like the short suggests. In the cartoon, Casey survives, but of course that wasn't the case. And lastly, the real crash occurred at night in the rain, and not a sunny and bright day like the cartoon. But with some beautiful watercolor backgrounds, characters by Mill Call, and even a rare Disney appearance for voice acting legend Mel Blanc, voicing Casey, I think we can look past a few historical inaccuracies. What would a celebration of America's tall tales and legends be without a glimpse into our national pastime? This is Casey at Bat. Casey at the Bat was written in 1888 by Ernest Thayer, and later became a vaudeville act by performer DeWolf Hopper. It follows the story of a baseball team in Mudville who, losing by two runs, believe putting in their star player, Casey, will win the game for them. He's so cocky that he strikes out, losing the game for the Mudville Nine. The poem took its inspiration from a man Thayer knew, named Daniel Casey, and some say his best friend Samuel Winslow, who played for Harvard, was the inspiration to make Casey a ball player. There was also a very cocky player at the time named Mike King Kelly, who was traded from Boston to Chicago for $10,000 in the 1887 season that Thayer covered as a journalist for the San Francisco Examiner. In fact, the Daily Examiner reprinted the poem as Kelly at the Bat in 1888. Disney's Casey at the Bat was produced for the package film Make My Music, released in 1946. If you look closely at the band at the stadium, you'll see they resemble four of the nine old men and even Walt himself. Comedian Jerry Colonna gives an amusing reading of the poem, the gags are as funny as they are creative, and the animation is top-notch as usual. It did well enough that in 1954 it was given a sequel, Casey Bats Again, in which Casey is blessed with several daughters, who all share his love for baseball. Casey Bats Again was the final short Fred Moore, the man behind Mickey Mouse's redesign for Fantasia, worked on before his tragic car accident in November of 1952. Like his predecessor, Casey Bats Again has strong character design, funny gags, but what I really enjoyed was the way they captured the time period of the early 20th century. The clothing, backgrounds, hairstyles, all really bring you into the world of Mighty Casey. I saved my favorite for last. Let's head out west with the toughest critter west of the Alamo, Pecos Bill. The character of Pecos Bill originates from stories written by Edward O'Reilly in 1917 for Century Magazine. O'Reilly claimed they were part of an oral tradition of tales told by cowboys during the westward expansion, but most folklorists believe O'Reilly invented the stories himself and referred to the tales as fake lore. From 1929 to 1938, O'Reilly and friend Jack A. Warren published a comic strip based on the character. The short tells the tale of Pecos and his horse Widowmaker as they become responsible for a number of national landmarks, much like Paul Bunyan before Pecos falls in love with Slewfoot Sue. 
The short comes to us from 1948's package film, Melody Time, and is one of the most gorgeous shorts Disney ever produced. The backgrounds, much like their adaptation of Sleepy Hollow, look so nice I wish they made prints of them. The West never looks so good. The creativity is on full display in the Pecos and Widowmaker scenes, and the almost pin-up style design of Slufa Sue is enjoyable as well. My favorite part has to be the live-action opening sequence featuring Roy Rogers, Bobby Driscoll, and the Sons of the Pioneers singing the haunting cowboy ballad, Blue Shadows on the Trail. Pecos Bill and Melody Time itself is a film for anyone who loves great music and masterclass animation. Thank you for watching my look at Disney's Tall Tales and Legends. If you want to be kept up to date as to when I release a new video, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. And if you really want to be notified, go ahead, hit that bell. I'm Brian, and I'll see you next time.